And you know that kind of thing of, oh, we all know Kylie sort of is known for joy and euphoria. And, yeah. and logically we understand it, but it was that moment, moment yeah, in that show that yes. I physically felt it. I had goosebumps all over yeah. me. It, it, it was like a drug. Uh-huh. Yeah. Gun right there. Gun right there, Kylie yeah. song. <laughs> Welcome to Kylie Behind the Scenes, a show where two Kylie Minogue superfans deep dive into her ever-evolving wardrobe and discuss the amazing costumes and what they mean to us. I'm Owen. People know me as Owen Minogue. And I'm Joe. And if I'm working with uh, Minogue, maybe I should be known as a Jason. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Where you know us now as Owen Joe, where two Kylie fans that have met about 20 or so years ago as our sort of Kylie worlds and orbits intertwined. Uh, we're now part of a group of friends called the Kylie Crew and uh, we're here today to give you a more personal perspective on her incredible wardrobe. We've lined up six episodes for you. You may have heard some of them already. If not, subscribe. Yeah, go and um, check them out. <laughs> <laughs> These episodes feature pieces that are old, some that are new and some that you may not know so much about and really don't get much attention sometimes as well. So You'll get our stories, you'll get our experiences, um, some official insights and some steps taken into preserving these amazing items. What do we have today? One of those ones that is lesser known or uh, which, uh, what have we got? Today we are going back to the era of 2011, oh, which isn't one. too long ago. No. And we're going to be exploring the Aphrodite Le Folle tour. Amazing. So, yes. What, my favourite. <laughs> yes, yes. Probably one of Kylie's biggest uh stage shows to ever tour yeah yeah it absolutely. kind of was kind of, was kind of like uh las vegas on wheels <laughs> totally well i'm excited let's get to it okay so this piece that we're looking at today um is it's from the encore section oh. of the uh show perfect it was a kind of a three di- well four dimensional experience yeah. for fans with this item in particular what I love about it is it's something that Kylie really hasn't, we haven't seen Kylie wear before. It's referencing old school Hollywood, 1930s, 1940s. It's referencing Busby Berkeley. It's referencing uh, Ziegfeld Folly, which is where the title of the tour came from. Yeah. So the best way to describe it is that 1930s, 1940s swimming costume that you would have seen in all the old Hollywood films. It also yeah. had the swimming cap to match and it had a beautiful uh, pleated cape that went with it. So, yeah, you might just think, oh, yeah, it's just a swimming costume. But what makes this even more amazing is that it was bejeweled. It had yeah. strings of pearls. It had a beautiful – that were attached to like a beautiful uh, gold collar – the swimming cap was beautiful as well. It had pearls and sequins and crystals all over it. And as she would be on, as she was on stage, she would emerge from underneath and the projections also had like synchronised swimmers, which kind of referenced um, the film Million Dollar Mermaid. So when you saw her arrive on stage, it kind of looked like she was one of the synchronised swimmers on... Absolutely, yes. ...in the projection. She, she fit in perfectly. It was timed to absolute perfection. Yeah, yeah. so once she arrived on stage... You were just in awe. It was like, wow, where is this going? For people that may not not have gotten the reference until later on, you were like, okay, this is different. Yeah. But then as she come down on stage, her art, she held onto the cape and she kind of moved them like wings as she walked down the stairs, performed with her dancers, which were all in like mirrored capes, which kind of complemented her outfit as well. Totally, yeah. Um, Yeah, and then as she walked along the catwalks, there was two on each side of the stage that met at a B stage, and as she walked along there, she would be fluttering her cape like wings (laughs) and there would be water projections that came up and that were illuminated by lights. And this is something that we had never seen before on a touring show. It was... It literally took your breath away. I can still remember being in the audience and hearing the <gasps> from yeah. people and the cheers and everything. Yeah. It was it was a spine tingling moment, a complete uh, moment. Yeah. So this this piece it was just absolutely beautiful, and I know like it's it's got um, skin tones, it's got gold, it's got mother of pearl. It just glistens under lights, and even though it is a lesser known item, it is one of the fan favourites. Like I've spoken to people in our Kylie crew and I've spoken to other fans online and they love it. With this piece, it was also inspired by the film 
um, A Million Dollar Mermaid, which starred yes, yes, Esther yes. Williams. That's correct. That's yep. right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I was a bit worried I was going to forget there. So um, that film was actually a biopic on another Australian icon as right. well, and her name was Annette Kellerman. Uh-huh. And she was known as The Million Dollar Mermaid. So that's referencing the title there. She was a vaudeville star. She was a movie star. She was also a famous Australian swimmer and she was an author as well and wrote how-to guides on synchronised swimming. So there's that (laughs) reference that you would have seen in the show. That's right. Which Uh, is so rare for a pop show. You would never think that synchronised swimming in a a modern pop concert would be the kind of (laughs) place that they draw inspiration from. Exactly. It's kind of amazing that Kylie pays homage or reference to another Australian icon as well. Yeah, exactly. Kylie and Annette Kellerman, they're very, very similar in a way. They even created their own costumes as well. So she sewed and made a lot of her film costumes as well in her earlier career, as did Kylie. Yeah. And I don't know if it's just pure coincidence, but in one of her films, she... uh, she w- was dressed as a mermaid and she made her own mermaid tail, which is still influencing a lot of mermaid costumes at Witchy Watchy Springs in the US. <laughs> yeah. But she named that mermaid tail Darling. Like Quincy- the perfume. Like the yeah. perfume. Yeah, so um, I found that quite interesting as well. And one of Annette's movies that she did was called Venus of the South Seas. Oh. So the tour, Aphrodite, Venus was the Roman version of the Greek god. Venus de Milo coming out of the yep. seashell. Exactly, exactly how right. the tour opens. Yep. It's perfect. And the tour paid homage to Greek mythology as well as influence from Siegfried Folly. Oh, love that. Oh, 1945 film for anyone that doesn't know like by <laughs> MGM. Um, uh, actually, now that you mention it, there's I've got a quote that Kylie um, used as explaining why the tour was titled Aphrodite Lee for yeah. me at all. Um, and she said she was promoting it, I think, and she answered a, a question and she said, oh, Siegfried Follies, it's been crazy about, I've been crazy about that movie and that period in music, Dan and film my show has a bit of that so it became Aphrodite Lee for Lee um and I think that's really incredible like yeah just that that whole kind of moment old Hollywood synchronized swimming uh Busby Berkeley that that to put that in a the context of a modern sort of pop show was really uh, even though it harked back to sort of old Hollywood yeah. it was kind of really modern and and refreshing so it's it was interesting to see that that somebody um, in this era was was doing that. Yeah, and it made you want to learn because I would yes. have not known anything about things. Totally. Yeah. And also with that, in terms of Lee for Lee, it's sort of loose. I mean, my French is not great, so don't quote yeah. me on anything. I, but... Look, I'm completely <laughs> sympathised there. I have no idea on how to pronounce but things either. <laughs> I understand that it could loosely translate to sort of the extravagant. And uh, given that the show was as over the top and ornate as it was, uh, there, it could reference the uh, Folie Berger, which is a venue, a cabaret venue in, in Paris. Yeah, which from my understanding is very – not – the same, but very similar to like the Moulin Rouge. For, uh, yeah, so yeah, for sort of. They, they know, do yeah. cabaret shows, and and they were known for being sort of extravagant and spectacles, which this tour was. And if you even see the the facade of the building, it has um, these gold frescoes on it that are um, Art Deco. Oh wow! And yeah. uh, with arches as well. And of course, then the stage itself having the arches and the, sort of the all Greek the Greek pillars and the, yeah. correct all the everything that was gold in it. Yeah, that tied in then with all of the other references and Zeigfeld Follies. It's it's sort of all feeds on itself. And given too that it's French, when we, as we, we know discussed. how much she loves um, <laughs> loves French um, pieces. Yeah. yeah, total Francophile. So it's <laughs> French influence and words and titles and the whole bit. Yeah, amazing. So, oh, can you give me some sort of finer details about the costume? Well, it was probably designed. Well, it is it was designed by one of the biggest names, or well, the biggest fashion houses um, mm. that we know of. It's a household name, Dolce and Gabbana. Yeah. We all know mm, them. Love them. <laughs> <laughs> They're amazing. Yeah. It was beautiful. It was shiny. We know how she loves her gold. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> yes. We've touched on that already. <laughs> we have episode one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds very simple, but it was. Yeah. Bedazzled. Um, it was bejeweled. It had um, crystals. It had pearls. It, and when you saw it under the light, it just wowed you. It gave you that gasp. The other thing too with the costume specifically that I love, uh, and and you you get that when you see the entire show, is that um, that gold bodice that's underneath this costume. 
runs throughout runs throughout the whole show every yes. section yeah and I had never seen that in any other sort of contemporary pop artist concert. which you don't really notice unless you pay fine attention to it and I think that that's what because these costumes are so elaborate, I can remember, like, not necessarily this particular item, obviously, but there were other costumes in the tour that were so big. I can remember in the behind-the-scenes documentary, she said that they had to kind of walk through the door sideways sometimes <laughs> yeah. to get onto stage from quick change. But at the same time, having that gold bodice underneath, it made it easy for quick change because they just had to take a layer off and put another layer Absolutely on. Absolutely yeah. would have. And I'm not sure if Kylie's mum was on this tour, <laughs> Carol. She was known as Quick Change Carol. Carol? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for those that don't know. And also, if you haven't seen the show, go and check it out because you, you'll notice that throughout from the very opening act to the closing encore that this gold bodice sort of underpins everything else. Exactly. And, and I... I I love it because visually it's a it's a um, a point of cohesion. And yes. I remember at the time with the Aphrodite album, there was in the lead up to it, there was some sort of the the hardcore fan base was sort of craving some uh, sort of cohesion. I guess is the right word right, with yeah. with the music and and the style that, that Kylie was doing. Yep. So with the album itself, Stuart Price was brought in as a producer, and and he sort of did that musically and provided the sort of cohesive landscape. Exactly. And then this body, this bodice, visually creates, creates that, that same, same cohesion. cohesion. So yeah. the whole Aphrodite album and era completely does that in in all levels. I'm so glad that you brought a lot of this up because we don't really know too much about this particular piece. And I was going through Kylie fashion. I was going through um, even the goddess edition um, (laughs) of Aphrodite because there is some little pieces at the back, but there was nothing that referenced this particular costume, which made it really difficult. I'm like, oh, I wish Kylie was sitting next to us so we could ask her those questions. But you've done some really good um, research there. Oh, my pleasure. But it's also, it's been like that throughout this podcast, even when we were looking at other episodes in the Je ne sais pas pourquoi dress. And, and, and when you think that there isn't as much to discuss, it's kind of really intriguing and interesting how there always is a story and, and a memory associated that will, will re-trigger the kind of experiences that you've had and, and what costumes and, and stage shows mean as, as fans of, of a pop artist. What, what's one of your biggest memories from this tour or this era even? This whole era for me is, is about I mean, tour, tour, tour. It's, it's it, what it was. I mean, obviously the album is great and, and I love it for that. But mm. this stage show... Uh, just because of the the scale and the the spectacle of it um, is what the whole era is defined by. Uh, of yeah. course, then too, obviously, there's the connections that we have with with our friends, the Kylie crew group of friends that that we've become. Uh, but it's it's the sort of the staging initially that fully grabs me whenever I think of it. In fact, so yeah. much so that if people say to me, "Oh, why do you like Kylie? Why is she such a great performer?" In your opinion, this is a, like the reference point. <laughs> Absolutely, it's yeah. these two songs. It's this yep. costume, which you know we talk about it not being seen as much, but indirectly because this is the the bit that I tell people to go on YouTube or send them the link to. They actually see this costume quite a bit. Um, and again, just there's fountains in, in the show. It's a stage that's massive. It's got Grecian columns. There were props. Um, and I mean, so much so in terms of staging that even Lady Gaga tweeted Kylie about it. That's, do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do. Because she was, was it her monster? I think it was Monster Ball. Yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I, she, I have the exact tweet. Yeah. Um, it's from 2012 and and it says, At Kylie Minogue, if it wasn't for your tour, I wouldn't have had to pay so much to build this massive all cap state. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being a supportive female. To which Kylie replied, At Lady Gaga, always exclamation mark and hashtag stage price tag is killer, but we do it for the fans. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. That's where people have looked to Kylie and drawn inspiration. Like, well, if she can do it, let's do it too. Let's go to the tour and talk about our own personal experiences. Absolutely. Which I'm sure many other fans had the exact same experiences. Uh, probably, because even ours, I think, will probably align. Yeah, because we, saw it all we together. went together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, there's other things I want to get to as well. But did you get wet? Absolutely. (laughs) Thank you for that question. Context very necessary. (laughs) And not only did that happen, it happened with Molly Meldrum. (laughs) (laughs) I still remember that moment. Like um, 
for people that didn't go to the show, you got if you had the Splash Zone um, tickets, you got given a backpack. It had goodies in there, but also gave you a water poncho That's if great. you didn't want to get wet. And I just thought, no, I'm not going to wear the water poncho. How often do you get to go to a show like this and experience the fourth dimension and actually get drenched by the water cannons that spray over the audience. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and exactly the same. And, and I remember too, as that moment happened, because you know I'd seen parts of the show on YouTube beforehand, so you knew exactly when it was coming. I know you love coming. spoilers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, everyone's putting their poncho on and I thought, no, I'm not doing that. I, I, should, I want to have that moment where you yeah. kind of get soaked. And Molly Meldrum also wasn't putting his poncho on. And I remember looking around and we were kind of one of the very few that, that sort of stayed in our clothes. Yeah. But I also lost everybody. We're all together during out in the show and then that moment hit and the beat kicked in and everybody just like went bananas and I turned around and everybody had gone and I just, yeah. And I can remember turning around seeing Molly like full on mosh pitting at one point. (laughs) Well, right before the water cannons happened, he gave me this kind of like knowing wink of of what was about to happen. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And drenched, fully soaked, literally to my underwear, dripping wet. And, um, and you know, that kind of thing of, oh, we all know Kylie sort of is known for joy and euphoria and, and logically we understand it, but it was, that moment. moment, yeah, in that show that yes. I physically felt it. I had goosebumps all over yeah. me. It, it, it was I mean, like a drug, haha. <laughs> Pun yeah. right there. Pun right there. Kylie yeah. song. <laughs> um, <laughs> that yeah, that that moment provided that kind of incredible feeling. It, it was you like every like. It was like being at the best rave of your lifetime <laughs> yeah. without the influence of Substances. other substances. The yeah. music was the substance. The show was the I don't even remember looking at her on stage during that No, part. same. We all just went crazy and we're jumping in time with the music and it was, it was the moment. I'm sure that there are other fans that are listening as well that know exactly what we're talking about Completely. right there. Yeah. There has to be. So if you do, in comments, let us know yeah. your stories because we would love to hear them. And then after the show, they're out in Garden Square at Rod Laver Arena. It's not there anymore, but there was a fountain. <laughs> and we were we all thought that it would be funny to create our own Kylie Lay Folly photo. And we stood there in the dark, got our photos taken, and you were freezing your bits off. I was for real. <laughs> Freezing, <laughs> dripping wet still. Yeah. But I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. It was such a it's great like, experience. We got the photo. No, just one more, one more. Oh, come on, we're freezing. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but I had that that freezing moment because she did three shows. Yeah. I went to all three. Yeah. But the third show, I got completely drenched. And I can remember putting my jacket on because it was in the middle of winter. Yeah. The water was heated. But when you got outside and put your jacket on, I can just remember go, <gasps> it just hit you. It was... <laughs> It, it was so bitterly cold. And I know that she did the splash zone as well throughout Europe. And the show yeah. started in the middle of winter yeah. <laughs> in, was, was, oh, I can't even remember which country it was. Oh, was it Denmark? Denmark, yeah. yeah. And it, I can remember that there was some, like in her tour of vlog blogs, which um, were great. Glad um, you mentioned that. <laughs> it was winter. And I'm like, are you kidding? They're doing the splash zone. People are going to get trenched. And it's the middle of winter. And we know what Scandinavian winters are like. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But speaking of. The tour blogs. Yes. I'd love to know if anybody else listening got featured on that tour blog because, as we know, for people that don't know, but Kylie fans know, it got she she had a videographer and she would have a member of the band, backing singer, a member of the tour, like entourage that would come out with the videographer and would int- do vox pops or interviews with fans at every pit stop on the tour. Correct. And we got featured in it, did you? In fact, I think I'm the first person that you see in it. Uh, yeah. Roxy Wilde, yeah. Yeah. Uh, her backing vocalist was in the crowd and spotted me instantly because... <laughs> what were you wearing? Uh, so <laughs> embarrassing. Um, but if you well, if you don't know, there was a Tour X 2008 and there was a, a skull in, in that show that Kylie sort of enters the stage riding in a red military uh, outfit. So once you see that, you'll know exactly what we're talking yep. about. And I decided to replicate that whole look. So yeah. I had... <laughs> you did an amazing job. Uh, well, uh, thank you. <laughs> a lot of work. But um, there was, you know, when you get sort of like a builder's hat and they have the, the frame and the little twist thing. Yep, yeah, yeah, kind of Underneath the hard hat, yeah. That skull weighed a ton. I had a massive headache at the end of the show. <laughs> but what was the skull? The skull was actually what you'd find attached to a skeleton in a doctor's surgery or uh, something? Absolutely. Yeah. It was a, a, like a medical skull that I brought on eBay, um, sprayed it with this like 
glitter spray stuff, so it was all silver. I had a, a Kylie doll stuck on top of it, on top of my head. <laughs> With the costume that she wore in the X2. With X-tour. the costume. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then even the projections in that part of the section uh, were yeah, sort of – they were like this kind of futuristic, like green sort of like a dot matrix, yeah, three dimensional matrix, type great thing. One. Yeah, um, and I hand painted a black shirt with neon green paint dot by dot to kind of replicate that sort of look. If you type in <laughs> Lay for Lee or Kylie um, Aphrodite tour, even Melbourne, um, Melbourne yeah. the video comes up straight away. You will see Joe, and you'll see what he's talking about. He nailed this costume, <laughs> and the reason why we did costumes is because she gave. Be, um, prizes prize, away for yeah. best dressed in the audience That's too. Right. So I, I really think you should have won that. Well, one. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I did get a. I think it was a signed program. I think was the prize. I got a signed postcard. But um, shout out to the lifeguards because I think they won. They that did. One. Yes, yeah. in that one. Yeah, there was lifeguards on duty. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, hi. Uh, but. Also with that too, then our Kylie crew members were all dressed up as well. I think you had a Greek toga on. Right? Yeah, I had a yeah, I had a Greek toga sash with the little gold headdress. It was we, incredible. That was such a that was that was a blast. Yeah, I can really oh what memories. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, that that kind of is what all of this means for me and and our friendship group, which yeah. is what this is all about. Yeah, exactly right. So yeah, with that Kylie blog, it was pretty much the opportunity for People like us, the, the, the diehard fans at every show to record a message for Kylie or tell Kylie about yeah. their first memory or their love of something that she had done. So um, I can remember um, Jimmy was the um, videographer. Oh, I remember his first name. <laughs> he said, everyone's doing the welcome homes, the welcome homes. So yeah. That's where I told my story, which was in episode two about not being able to watch Neighbours growing up. Uh-huh. But um, <laughs> my memories of Kylie was, or my first memory of Kylie was the music. And that was what my um, message was. And there were some really beautiful uh, messages from other fans, especially in countries that she had never visited before. Yeah. She had gone to South America and did a full tour of South America. She even went to South Africa and seeing the emotion from those fans in those eras was really, really beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it really was. And then the yeah. people that had flown in because people yeah. were saying that they, you know, how many shows they'd seen, where they were from. Yeah. Um, and it also gave, if if you weren't able to go to a show, you got to follow sort of the journey. You got to live week. vicariously through those video blogs. I'd l- Kylie, I'd love you to do another tour Thank vlog you. because it was such a beautiful moment for fans to be able to Im- be involved in this amazing project that you were doing at the time. And let's not forget too, once this whole tour had wrapped, speaking of n- the whole Nora skull moment, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> which yeah. is what the skull was called, if you don't know. I know, when they refer- oh, bloody Nora. That's what they kept saying all the time <laughs> yeah. on socials. I think it was Sean Fitzpatrick, a tour manager that would always yep. reference the skull. And that. I said that a lot after that show because, I, like I said, had a massive <laughs> headache at the end of it. But we got to all reprise, I don't know if you remember, okay. we got to all reprise our costumes and have that Nora moment because this show was filmed in 3D, (gasps) then got released. Yes, I completely (laughs) forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where you're going. Got released to cinema and we all as a Kylie crew decided to go and see it together in the cinema. That's right, yes. And... As I said, we were all dressed up in our costumes again, but the this one hilarious moment with this section in particular, <laughs> because of yep. the water cannons, our darling friend Sarah decides to bring a water pistol she to the She brought two screening. super soakers <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah. So as we're watching this in all our regalia, <laughs> she decides as the cannons go off on the screen to fire water pistols. I was pistols one of them firing the, the water pistols in and people were looking around in the cinema like, where is that water coming from? <laughs> Touching their heads. Yeah. So we created we, the whole 4D it was, experience. Yeah, it was Lay for Lee 4D. Uh, uh, thank you for bringing that up because I wanted to talk about that and I completely forgot. And what um, what an amazing uh, moment to relive. Um, the silly crap that we did. <laughs> totally. And probably a good place to end it, right? Uh, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Thanks for the memories. Thanks, Kylie. And uh, if you want some more, 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 we do have another episode lined up for you. So it's our lucky last episode coming is. up. Yes, so join us then and we'll continue to take you one last time behind the scenes. Thank you for listening. 